Welcome back to Bible study. Thanks for uh, tuning back in uh, to us uh, three as we grapple with these amazing scriptures in uh, Colossians. And um, I have to say, these Bible studies, uh, we, we've obviously done our years. We've done our time, as it were. We've paid our debt to society and we've gone through, you know, some quite difficult passages. Uh, and uh, but also glorious, wonderful uh, passages and, and with our own sort of uh, human limitations, you know, and by God's grace and by his spirit, uh, we're here today to, uh, to look again at these verses in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to uh, 20. Uh, I hope you, you feel blessed as we do uh, going through these, <coughs> these scriptures and we... Um, Alan is going to read, I'm going to pray, and then it's round two. Yeah. I think, Tim, I'll, I'll read uh, 2.23. Yes, please do. Uh, okay, so one, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 23. <clears throat> he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless, and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Lord, we just uh, come uh, before you again in humility. As the hymn writer said, how shall I whose native sphere is dark whose mind is dim, before the ineffable appear, and on my naked spirit bear the uncreated beam. Help us, Lord, to, to hear from you, hear from you through your word, uh, through uh, what uh, the Apostle Paul has written, and we pray that we would be enriched uh, during this hour. Amen. Amen. Yes, um, so the, again, my, I suppose my opening line last week was, you know, how would these folks at Colisee uh, feel, you know, you know, when, let's say, this was first read out in the company, in the fellowship? I, I certainly would want to say, wow, run that by me again, <laughs> you know, what, what, could you read that again, please? Well, it's no um, wonder that Paul said, look, the, the, the letter that I wrote to Laodicea, read that, and then the one that I'm writing to you, give it to them to read, yeah. because this kind of thing needs reinforcement and repetition and... Yeah, yeah. that's it. I, I, I think you, so. There's no way you can absorb it just, you know, uh, with one pass. That's it. you just got to keep... That is the point. That is the point. Now, you know, so we... <coughs> I, I think we... And uh, Ian, last week you, you alluded to uh, or mentioned the, the Trinity, and I do think it is worthwhile for us just to read the scriptures that are there. We were talking a lot last week about, you know, Father, Son and Holy Spirit without getting into the, you know, the internecine intricacies of, uh, of, of the nature of the divinity of, of Christ. I think it is good just to reaffirm for the folks watching the scriptures that actually, um, and there aren't many, so it's not too... It's not going to be too arduous uh, that clearly mention the Trinity. Who well, wants to start? Well, we have at the end of uh, Matthew chapter 28, where. Sh should we read it? Where go ye therefore? 
yeah. baptized. Or, or, or you re recite it. Yeah, yeah, go ye therefore and preach to God's teaching all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's yeah. the first thing. There is a, a, an equality between the, all the, uh, the persons of the Trinity. Um, there is in John chapter 10, uh, be, when, uh, when uh, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, and he was taken upon himself the name of of uh, God, which we find in Exodus chapter one, I think it is, uh, you know, and it was very clear. And they then said, you know, we're stoning you because you claim to be God. Mm. They, you know, they understood quite easy. Mm. And then, then throughout the Bible, we where it says the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No, no, I think, yeah, yeah. I, I think Tim, uh, yeah. I think what you're asking is specifically, without three, using three the word together. Trinity, that's right, uh, is mentioned in one breath. Yeah, uh, God. Jesus and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think there's one example in uh, 1 John chapter uh, 5. It says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven mm. the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Uh, mm. If I may just yeah. read on. And there are three that bear witness on earth the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. Mm. So even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible, there are passages which clump together. Mm. Uh, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit mm. in one breath. Mm. And, and this sort of tripartite um, model is the model of man as well. So uh, I'm assuming from that the second on earth, which on about, earth is the, yes, the spirit, the water, us. and the blood, yes. Because um, <clears throat> there is this tripartite type nature, nature to man. Yeah. Um, uh, any more? Yes, a benediction. A I mean, letter. Paul ends uh, some of his letters with a benediction. Yeah. Should we read it? It's, you know, just so that we, you know, people uh, don't think we're let me, completely let me, heretical. Let me see if I can find one. Keep talking. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, well, we don't know. What is this, a sound check? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, um, I, well, uh, uh, I thought that was, there was one at the end of... Um, uh, and the... Uh, it's 1 Corinthians. Two Corinthians. Yes, uh, a, a lot of the time Paul ends uh, his letters with a benediction. For example, in Ephesians, it's peace to the brethren and the love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But he doesn't mention the Spirit. But there is, I think there is one way he does mention the, the Holy Spirit in the same breath. Mm. Um, but it, it, it was, uh, have we got that one? It, uh, uh, but anyway, it was, wasn't it grace and peace? Uh, it says, all right, two Father. Corinthians, at the end of two Corinthians. Yes. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so at the end of 2 Corinthians. <coughs> the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So, so all three are mentioned okay, in the so same that, breath. That's, that's so it, as you said at the beginning, <coughs> there are actually very few occasions in the New Testament no. where the, the three, uh, God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are mentioned in one breath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple in 2 John th uh, 3 where this Jesus as God's Son, uh, grace and mercy and peace be, uh, will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son, mm. in truth and love. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy mm. to the only God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory majesty, dominion, authority, before all time and forever. Mm. Um, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> yeah. So uh, that sort of leads me into the sort of second half of verse uh, 15. Can we uh, unpack, there's, there's two occasions in this reading. One is firstborn over all creation, and the other one is firstborn from among the dead, um, in terms of the Lord uh, Jesus. I think we we can appreciate the firstborn um, from among the dead, because he's yeah. the first to, uh, you know, uh, although there were occasions with Lazarus and others who then subsequently died. Not only Lord that, Jesus but with, the, with the Elijah first, and everything in the, he was the, the first Old born. Testament. He was the firstborn yeah. from among the dead. But not only in the sense that chronologically <coughs> he was, no, but no, that he the, is preeminent. Preeminence. I, I think that that's it. <coughs> I think we're not talking chronologically. Yeah. We're talking in terms of importance yep. 
yeah. and in terms of importance, uh, Jesus definitely is the firstborn yeah. to be raised from the dead, from among the dead. Yeah. So he was dead, yeah. but he's alive. I mean, if he didn't die, if he simply slept or was or fainted, yeah. uh, then there would be no salvation. Yeah. So he was physically dead and he is physically alive. Yeah. So we, we get that. The, the, the other one <coughs> uh, is reminiscent of John chapter 3. Uh, the most famous verse in, yeah. in the Bible, God so. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm. Now, he didn't say his only son because we are sons of God. So it's not possible to say Jesus is God's only son, mm. but Jesus is God's only begotten son. And in that sense, uh, uh, verse uh, 15 here, he's the firstborn over all creation. Yeah. And there was the element in the virgin birth of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> you know, there um, uh, where Mary conceived. Yeah. So there is, uh, you know, an amazing... That's right. He sees the only begotten. We are created yeah. sons of yeah. God. Yeah. God created Adam and Eve. Yeah. We are created sons of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the begotten son of God. Mm -hmm. Begotten, not created, as it says in the final, in the carol. In the, yes. Wonderful. Begotten, not created. Yes. The, the, the term, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of a creation, mm -hmm. the, the image of the invisible God. Yeah. And again, you've got to, you've got <coughs> to actually understand uh, who is writing this. It's Paul, um, a, a Pharisee of the Pharisees, you know, yeah. who believed in one God. Mm. Uh, and when he says he's the image of the invisible God, what is he actually saying? He's actually saying, look, if you want to know what God is like, yeah. look at Jesus. Yeah. And, I, and I think that, that, that is important mm. um, in our witnessing. You know, it's in our preaching. We point people to Jesus. Mm. Uh, if, if Christ be lifted high, he will draw all men to himself. Mm. And we, 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 we point to Jesus because he is the image. It's, it's how people can relate to God. Mm. And, yeah. that's re and, and that's and really, that's really what 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 is being said here, all the time. You know, if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. Yeah. You know, and, that, and, and uh, in in two Corinthians four, he says a very similar thing. Um, he says, "The light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, mm. should shine on them." Also, in the Gospels, uh, Philip asked Jesus, "Show us the Father." Yeah. And he said, "Philip, you know, you, you you've seen me." Yeah. You've yeah. seen me, you've seen so, the Father. So th there's, th th there's an authority issue here, you know, mm. establishing Jesus' right to rule, yes. to reign, to judge. <coughs> it's important to judge because yeah. in the end of Revelation, yeah. he's on the judgment seat. Yeah, so th yeah. there's a verse in, in Romans 3 where it, where it says that um, we know that whatever the law says, this is verse um, 19, it says to those who are under the law, and it says, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Now, if, if Paul hasn't established Jesus, his preeminence, what right has he got to rule? Mm. Mm. It's, it's, it's absolutely critical that it, he's not just uh, an also-ran or just um, uh, even first among equals. He's actually uh, distinctively, you know, uh, um, and essentially... Uh, preeminent over all of creation, over all humanity, over all creation. All things were created um, by him. I mean, it's establishing this position that he is um, preeminent, supreme. And, yeah. It's a good word. It's yeah. a good word, preeminent. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so I think we've, we've, base, we've basically hammered that point, unless you, you've got something else there, Alan. Well, um, no, 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 that's... Yeah. Yes. In verse 17, yeah. he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Now, that's a uh, wonderful In verse. other words, it's not only talking about him creation, but he is the very being yes. that holds things together. Now, that, that's if, that, massive. if that doesn't point <coughs> to God, yes. I don't know what does, yeah. you know, really. Just look at us and how all the atoms hold together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a yeah, big yeah. statement, that is. Yeah, it, it is. All, all, all things held up before me. He's before all things, and in him things before. I am Alpha and Omega, yeah. the beginning and the end. So when I read this, I, I, I mean, a straightforward reading, 
This is the most important thing for all of humanity to know. That they are, you know, don't worry about the little, you know, examination of, of uh, strings or DNA. Everything is held mm. together by the Lord Jesus. That's not a small thing. Mm. That, and the thing is, verse 18, um, having painted this picture of the Christ as such a glorious mm. person, and he spent a few verses painting this picture, he says, he is the head of the body. It's also saying that the glory of a king is reflected on the nation itself, mm. you see? Mm. Because the Queen of Sheba said to Solomon, your people are so fortunate to have you as the king. Mm. Well, that's nothing in comparison to Christians are so fortunate mm. to have Jesus as their Lord, mm. because who is this Jesus? And the reason Paul spent so much time describing this Jesus is so that he can conclude by saying, guess what? He is the head of the church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Because there's persecution, there's vilification, mm. and yet he's saying, and later on he talks about his own persecution. But wait a minute, who do we serve? Who is our head? So he has to spend this time yeah. building up. And I know that we spent all of last week talking about who Jesus is, yeah. essentially. Yeah. All right, irrespective of that, mm. you can't, and we talked about in Revelations, people bow down and worship the Lamb. This Jesus is the one who is the head of our head. Uh, and um, for me, the central question of our existence is why mm -hmm. and what is the purpose? And uh, I, I'm mystified or why most of, you know, the modern, you know, society and my fellow man and, you know, fellow citizens aren't engaged on this They're issue. They're not interested. I don't They're know just, why. It's a weird thing yeah. for me. Because mm. we are a miracle. You, you were talking about impossibilities last week. We are actually an impossibility. The, the way a cell, just, um, you know, the conception and then the divisions and, you know, and the personality. And that's at the micro and, level. And the spiritual and the conscience. At the cosmic, level. And yeah, at, yeah, at the cosmic level, the sun and the moon and the stars and the yeah. planets rotating, it's an impossibility. Yeah, it is. The, 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 the intricate and Venus spinning balance the other way which, just yeah, the to create the balance in our solar system. It's all counterintuitive. It's yeah. all, it's, it should be impossible. That's it, exactly. And so we're measuring it, but then, you know, the elephants in the room are, are let's say, gravity, you know, and things that are inexplicable. And the constants, they're there. The, the physical laws are there, the mathematical laws are there, you know, the moral laws mm. are there, <clears throat> written into the, you know, in signature in the conscience of every, every man. Why more people are not in our modern world asking why um, is a tragedy. And I think that the why is being answered here by God, by the Lord Jesus, by him coming to earth, by this, this vision of redemption and this plan of redemption and of the body of Christ, which we get into later. Yeah. That's right. And so the end result of this, the end result of who Jesus is and what he did, the end result mm. is reconciliation. And yes. it says, for, verse 19, for it pleased the Father mm. that in him all the fullness should dwell and mm. by him to reconcile all things to himself. Yes, by pause him. there. Um, all things. <laughs> reconcile all things to himself in to reconcile all things can, can I, I think this is uh, uh, or you can answer that later and to I, say I, what you I, want I, to I, say I, <laughs> yes, I, yeah, you, you moved on a little bit but no, very fine. quickly and, yeah, and I, I didn't want to interrupt the flow yeah. no, go uh, for it. but but you moved on without a break to verse 19 and now I've got something to say about verse 18 that Good that it says he's the head of the body, the yes. church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and mm. in all things he may be preeminent. Now, this, this head of the body, mm. the church, is an important mm. theological 
point which is Paul brings out time and time and again when he talks about the gifts of the spirit for example he talks uh, it, you know in first Corinthians 12 Romans 12 Ephesians 4 to name yeah. just three mm. uh, but it, there are a number of verses where it talks about Jesus being the head of the church now the important point is being made is that Jesus is the head of the church and therefore the purpose of spiritual gifts is not to give self-fulfillment, not to allow me to use this gift so I feel better about myself. It is that Christ, the head of the church, might be revealed. You know, and, and that is the important point to remember. It's not about us, mm. the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit are about Christ revealing Christ ahead of the church yeah you know? yeah yeah and, and so going on to 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 what you're talking about uh, by him reconciling all things to himself now this is what I constantly been emphasizing throughout these studies is that the purpose of God what's important to God is relationship um, we see it right at the very beginning of Genesis, right the way through. We have relationship with God. There's a relationship in the Godhead, Father, Son, Spirit. We have a relationship with God. That relationship has been broken through sin, but God doesn't give up on it. He still wants to be reconciled. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, when he was trying to describe how much God wants to be reconciled, he talks about the, the prodigal son, who actually went away. And remember, he was the eldest son. He was the, he was the eldest son who basically uh, took his share, which is the half share. He was the younger son, but carry on. Sorry, he was the younger matter. son. Yeah. And he, I beg your pardon. Uh, sorry. I beg your pardon. Yeah. He, well, it was the two sons. It was yeah. the half share, yeah. right? Because the eldest son gets the half share, but yeah. if the what's remaining is the half share. But, but, but he, he took that and, and basically... It's, it's like, I mean, to understand what was going on is that he might have had to mortgage the rest of the, the farm or whatever yeah. to give him that half share. Mm. And, and, and in Israel, inheritance was so, so important. It, it, it was what made mm. the whole of the cohesion of the, of the society holds together. Mm. Now, so Jesus, when he was trying to... Uh, give this illustration of sin. He talks about the prodigal son who takes this inheritance, abuses his father, abuses his brother, m does everything that is completely wrong in, in their society, and he goes off and squanders it. Mm. And then yet he says, and God, in, the form, in using the father, reaches out and forgives the son whilst mm. in the far country. Mm. And, and, and what he was illustrating was the love of God and how much he forgives us. Yeah. And so God, it's not a question of, you know, reconciliation is that God is instrumental in this reconciliation. It, it, you know, it's whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't seek after God. God sought after us. And that is how much God loves us. And so <coughs> relationship is vitally important. That's why there's so much in the Bible about relationships, why most of the pastoral epistles are, are written because it's about broken relationships yeah, yeah. and, and how, the, how we should be reconciled. Yeah. And, and broken relationships within churches yeah. hurt and break the heart of God. So this is a key, because this is another thing that we skipped over, but we didn't, we didn't, it was passing comment. It's, after it says, in him all things hold together, it says he's the head of the body, the church. And um, so this is how to resolve broken relationships. Yeah. When, it, when Paul says, hold fast to the head, um, and we, we, we'll, we'll have um, some discussion uh, later about, about the church and relationships in the church, but, but the key to the proper functioning of the whole universe is Christ. The key to the functioning of, of earth and, and the natural world is, is Christ. The key to the functioning of the church is the head. And our relationship to the head means that we can relate as, as different members of the body uh, from completely different backgrounds. So I never went to a theological college in Oxford. Um, uh, you know, I didn't go to the inns of court. Um, but we can still relate to each other. Yeah. 
um, because it's in Christ. And, and what, that is what we share in common in the koinonia that's mentioned in Acts 2.42. Now, it says all things, so does that mean universalism? I don't think so. Because <clears throat> reconcile can be used to mean two people coming back together yeah. after a, an argument or dispute or a falling mm. out. Mm. But equally, uh, as Ian pointed out in the story of the prodigal son, the one, the giver can just forgive somebody irrespective of whether they repent or not. Having forgiven the other person, if they repent, which means turn around, the reconciliation is already provided for. Mm. He has provided reconciliation to the other person by forgiving them. Yeah. If they take him up on that forgiveness and repent, they have the freedom to come back with, no with nothing further. Mm. Everything that's necessary for reconciliation has been performed. Yeah by the forgiver. Yeah. And I think this is that situation. Mm. It's not that Jesus has reconciled sinners who don't repent to himself. Yeah. He's provided the forgiveness for them. Mm. The forgiveness is freely available now. Mm. It does remind me of a uh, you know, Sermon on the Mount where the Lord said, if, if, not if you have something against your brother, if your brother has something against you, Go and first be reconciled. Yeah. Um, that's going more than what, again, is the natural. The natural is if you've got something, sort it out. And, but you're saying it's, it's more than that. You've, uh, and it's almost an image of God. He's going the extra mile. That's right. To draw us to himself. That's right. And uh, another occasion on which uh, Paul talks about reconciliation, it goes slightly deeper, is in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Mm. Uh, starting at verse uh, 18. 17, <coughs> 17, do 17. 17. Yeah. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, mm. he is a new creation. Mm. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Mm. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Keep going. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. <coughs> Reconciliation is mentioned yeah. several times in that passage. The, and wh wh why, why I asked you to read verse 17 is what he's saying is this is new. The old is gone, the new is here. Yeah. In other words, this is a radically new way of behaving. It's God's way of behaving. Mm. And just like you were intimating, mm. uh, saying, is that we have the ministry of reconciliation. It's our job to, to go and seek reconciliation, yeah. even if we're not responsible for the breakup. Mm. We're ambassadors. We're ambassadors for Christ. We seek to pour, pour oil on troubled waters, to mm. use that. Seek to. I mean, last we week we, we, Now, we it may be that it. we go <laughs> and our approaches are rejected. That doesn't matter. Mm. We seek to be reconciled, mm. and we cannot make people be reconciled to us, but nevertheless, we seek to be reconciled. Mm. And not this only do we seek, we implore. <coughs> yeah. yeah. It's and this is why real it's urgency there. so important, so important as Christians mm. for us to forgive everyone, yeah. everything. Yes. And Jesus laid it on quite thick with his uh, parables seven. about forgiveness and the, the unrighteous slave who was forgiven by the master and yet he went and throttled his fellow slave who wouldn't yield you know, his, his debt. It is so important because how can we have a ministry of reconciliation mm. which means God has forgiven yeah. when we ourselves won't forgive? Yeah. We cannot be ambassadors mm. yeah. if we hold a grudge against somebody yeah 
where the message is God does not hold a grudge against yeah. you or me. Mm. It's the Lord's Prayer again. Forgive as, as we forgive yeah. those who yeah. trespass against us. Mm. Uh, absolutely. And so the, the, the two things I just wanted to mention, as I said, one is it's not universalism. So reconcile all things doesn't mean yes. uh, that they are some would interpret it like yeah, that. It is, is the fact that the reconciliation is offered to all. And that That's is, that is universal. That yes. The first half is universal, yeah. the forgiveness. Uh, and our ministry, our ministry is to replicate and offer and plead for mm. that reconciliation, mm. um, you know, to our fellow man. Mm. You know, as you get older, you realize that you, you fall out with people for all sorts of reasons. And when you look back, you realize mm. they're not as important as no. you make them out to be. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, and uh, Absolutely. You know, I've often said to families, you know, that, I mean, one, one family, the, the, the daughter, lovely daughter, was gonna marry somebody who the father disapproved of. And, and I said, look, you know, what you need to understand is that it's about relationship and your relationship with your daughter. I said, I said, you make a stand and you say this and you force your daughter to choose. She'll choose the person, the husband yeah. or the boyfriend against you and you, and you lose your daughter. Yeah, you know, right. and, re and reconciliation, mm. accommodation is sometimes, and it's hard mm. because people make decisions that we know are unwise. Mm. And we know we'll end up in, you know, tragedy. But, you know, it's the relationship that is more important than being right. Yeah. You know, and I, I believe more than anything else. And that doesn't mean that we believe things that <coughs> we, we shouldn't believe or we, mm. we compromise what we believe. But we do everything within our power to make sure that we maintain that relationship. Mm. And there are so many fractured families mm -hmm. around uh, because of pride and because people said, mm. you know, it's a matter of pride. It's a matter yeah. of principle, yeah. you know, and what's what's the point of mm. dying alone? Yeah. Separated from your family. Yeah, so so we actually have this example the extreme example We were once alienated from God. We were his enemies um, uh, because of our evil behavior yeah. it, we, extreme rejection of God. What yeah. does God do? He seeks us Yes, he reconciles us through the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, it, and he uses this specific <coughs> term in, in chapter, in verse 20, where he said he made peace through his blood. Yeah, yeah. I know we don't always want to go into all of the in, ins and outs, but yeah. it, it, it's, it, it's saying that is the mechanism. Yeah. It's peace through what the Lord Jesus has done. Oh. It's, it's hard, it's hard because, you know, I, I've been in situations where I honestly believed I was right, and, and I still believed I was right. Mm. And yet I knew that if I continued and didn't make and take initiative, then there would be a broken relationship. Mm. So I went and, you know, sought to be reconciled. And, uh, and they would, you know, I remember one occasion where I went out my will. I knew I, I was the one that was hurt, and he said the horrible things about it, and we were gonna take communion that morning mm. and I thought I can't take communion whilst this is between us so I went to him before mm. the service and said Phil <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's watching you know who he yeah, is that yeah, yeah. Phil I'm really sorry that we fell out of the deacon and he said no there's no problem no, he, 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 no, 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 he, no, he didn't say that he yeah, said right. he said worse than that he says well thank you Ian I thought you were over the top and you were wrong but I'm glad you've come and apologized <laughs> to me and, and that want, is really I, sacrificial. And I really, I really... <laughs> Swallow that. I wanted to be, I, I wanted to scream, I wanted to justify <laughs> myself. But I knew that if I, if I did that, then it would start yeah. all over again. Yeah. So I just took it, walked away. Now, something died in that relationship. We weren't ever as close. Cause so as beware, no. Phil, you know, what may be just a little private tiff. Yeah. But you know, it, in church, comes out in public television 20 well, years later. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. You should say that because Phil has probably has no idea. Yeah. We could that. have used, uh, you know, an alias. Yeah, I know that. Phil ha probably, I'm saying <laughs> Phil because he's, he's probably dead now, but, you know, but, 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 uh, <laughs> but he, We won't misinterpret that, okay. But, 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 but you know, but, you know, the point is this. Yeah. 
I still have it in my heart. Yeah. I reached out. I know. Out. I, know. I, I reached You're out, a and that, that's person. that. That's the per, that's the per, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying to say that this ministry of reconciliation is easy. And it's it always almost wounding. You feel the also, scars of it. Yeah. The wounds of Christ. Are the, yeah. And it also, it also still remains there when it's rejected. But we still have to seek to be reconciled because mm. that's the ministry mm. Christ has committed to us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's a word here which um, <coughs> is, I don't think we should skip over, the word is heaven, because mm. everything else and makes sense. We won't sense. skip that one. <laughs> and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Why did he mention heaven? Having made peace through the blood of his cr uh, cross. Mm. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. So I get all that. I get the reconciliation, uh, even though we were once alienated and enemies <coughs> uh, by wicked works. But it puzzles me that he mentions whether things on earth or things in heaven. Mm. I, I well, just, I, I just need to check. I wonder if it's heavens. I'll check because often they use the, the, what they mean, heaven. They mean heavens. Yeah. And that might be a reference to Romans chapter mm. 8 where it talks about the whole of creation mm. uh, being redeemed through yes. Christ. Mm. I, I, I'll just check that out and, and see what it means. Um, well, while you're checking, you, you're talking about this you know, on, on earth, let's say, uh, reconciliation. There, there's the scripture, and I just can't remember where it is, as far as it depends on you, you know, oh, yes. with all yeah. men. That's it, yes. And at the end of the day, you know, as long as in your heart, you know, and you know before God that you have, you know, sought, as far as it depends on you to live at peace, you, you can't, you know, be carrying the burden, you know, indefinitely. No. Um, you, you've got to get on. Um, otherwise, we all get completely yeah. handicapped in life. <clears throat> Now, we've spoken, or I, I spoke earlier at least, about forgiveness, how it's so important to forgive. Mm -hmm. And I think that although it's a struggle, we get the concept <clears throat> and we understand what's required of us, that in order to give the message of reconciliation, we, need, we ourselves need to forgive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but there's another thing, that's, uh, that is um, resentment. Yes. Sometimes we do something wrong, but we know that the causation came from something outside. Mm. I know I shouldn't have done that, but somebody goaded me. Mm. Mm. Okay? So we have to come to terms with seeking forgiveness. We have to come to terms with living with that error. Mm. And there's nothing to forgive in the sense that nobody did anything to us that they shouldn't have done. It wasn't their fault, it's our fault. Mm. But there it could be a sense of resentment yeah. that had they not said what they said or done this or been there yeah. at that point, my whole life, my whole trajectory would have been slightly different Absolutely. and I wouldn't be in this situation. And that is corrosive. For resentment is a very corrosive. And thing. reconciliation has no room for resentment. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Can I go back to your oh, please question? Do. It, it, it actually, I, I looked at the, the, the Greek, and what it actually says is this, is that um, uh, it talks about having made peace by the blood of the cross of mm. him, through him, whether the things on the earth or things in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, so it, I, I, it often actually went. You have got to check. Yeah, but what are we talking about? When the heavens, the, the, the actual, the, the the universe, basically the heavens. So, so um, just it's, something that's very it's, comprehensive. It's 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 basically. Yeah. Uh, for when uh, Elon Musk is sort of, you know, inhabiting Mars. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, well, no, no. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, Romans eight talks about the whole of creation <clears throat> groaning. Yes. You know, and in, in other words, and that, and that's really. It, important point. People sometimes ask the question, what has my sin got to do with God? Why do I need to ask God forgiveness? Mm. I understand mm. that I need to ask you forgiveness if yeah. I've offended you, but why do I need to ask God? Now, the reason being is that in these verses that, you know, God is the creator, it's his being, and my sin 
be it even small, mm. spoils his creation. Very good point. And it, uh, and it goes, it's, it's like the flutter of the butterfly yeah. wing, you know, yeah. that, that, you know, chaos the, the chaos theory. Mm. Uh, and that's really an understanding. Even a little sin eventually has a tremendous effect in the universe. No doubt. And therefore, you know, the, the, the whole of the universe has to be renewed mm. and redeemed. Yeah. And that's what Romans 8 yeah. talks about, yeah. you know. Uh, and, and so, so w when it talks it's about... It's a very good point about us sinning against God. Yeah. I, I think that many folks, and that's not preached as yeah. it should be, yeah. Yeah. Um, so people don't have this concept of responsibility and the yeah. need to ask for forgiveness okay. yeah, in the mm. modern world. Very good point. Mm. Okay, um, so we have said, uh, read verse 22, um, he's reconciled you by Christ's physical body mm -hmm. through death to present you holy in his sight. So let's get on to that, shall we? That it's, it's not just... <coughs> that is mind-boggling. Yes. The, the, the fact is, it's one thing to be forgiven... You know, if my life is a train wreck yeah. and I've done things which I shouldn't have done and gone through divorce and this and the other, and it, it's a mess. Mm. And somebody says, you're forgiven. Somebody says, it's okay. Nothing will be held against you. Mm. All right, no account will be taken of all of that. Yeah. And God has forgiven you. I get that. God is... a uh, a good God, mm. he will forgive, and he does forgive, and he's forgiven. But this isn't what it says. Yeah. It goes way beyond forgiveness yeah. to a form of restoration, yeah. which to me is mind-boggling. Mm. And elevation, yeah. Um, it, so read it, that, that verse again. It says, to present you holy. Uh, there's one thing to be forgiven, yeah. for an unholy person to be forgiven, yeah. but the treatment that we received now is as one who is holy mm. and blameless yeah. and above reproach yeah. in his sight. As far as God is concerned, when he looks at you, mm. you're not a forgiven being. Yeah. You're not a flawed being who has been forgiven. You are a holy being. You are a blameless being. Mm. And you are above reproach. Mm. That's what he sees. That's right. So, um, yeah, it's mind-boggling. But then it brings us back down to earth and says, if you continue... Oh, oh, there are... Yes, yes. So there's, I, uh, think, that, that... I think that's a very interesting point to come to yeah. in, in a mo moment. Yeah. But it, what I find interesting is that he talks about that we are reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Now, that, that's interesting because there are two parts to atonement theology. The first is the death of Christ on the cross mm. as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. The second is the resurrection. Mm. And those two things go together. Now, when... when uh, a, a Bible verse actually focuses on the the death without reference to the reference uh, the resurrection you know it's actually it's it's actually making a point because the death of Christ talks to us about sin repentance forgiveness mm. in other words it talks to us that we are sinners mm. the resurrection talks about victory in Christ Restoration. That restoration, mm. victory, mm. overcoming sin. Now, quite often, it's easy to move to the second part of atonement theology mm. without going through the pain of the first part. Mm. And I think what, what, what is being emphasised here is that, you know, you know, as Paul says in other places, whilst you were yet sinners, yeah. Christ died for you. In other words, you didn't, you didn't redeem yourself. That's it. You didn't redeem yourself, and you are a sinner. Yeah. And you have committed sin, and yet God <coughs> seeks to be reconciled to you. And he, so much so that he died on the cross for you and for your sin. Now, what, we can't actually have a, 
a proper understanding of what it means to be reconciled with God without going through this process of understanding sin and how it affects me and how I, my sin uh, has spoiled my relationship with God and other people. Mm. Now, when we understand that, we repent. Yeah. And then we can move on to resurrection and victory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and restoration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, um, if we've if we've got to that point, I I, um, I sense. I mean, last last week we we had a good uh, ding dong, as it were, on 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 the nature of Christ. There's 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 something here about the nature of our salvation. Um, yes, uh, yes. Where it's basically saying we have a part to play. It's yeah. not all. It's initiated by God. Mm. It's credited to God. But there needs all to be a glory response. goes to God. Yeah. It's all of grace. But it does say if you continue, and this is the sort of Salvation Army um, position. That, yeah, you know, if you continue in, in the faith, state of faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, yeah. which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a so, minister. <coughs> so is that Colossi continuing coming from God or from us? Well, it's a two-way thing. Yeah. You see, because I think in Colossians, Paul talks about how, sorry, uh, about what, yes. that we are reconciled, mm. we are holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight, if, and then we continue in faith. Mm. Uh, if I can just refer to Galatians. Specifically on the holy and blamelessness. If I can state. refer to Galatians, it tells yeah. us the how. Okay. There's only one method, one way in which this can be achieved, according to Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith, same word again, faith, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <clears throat> so in other words, yes, it's true that we're forgiven and we're reconciled, or the reconciled has been mm. proffered to us. Yeah. God sees us as holy, blameless, and above reproach. Our response has to be faith. Faith is mentioned both in Galatians and in here. Mm. If we continue in the faith. Yeah. And that faith... Again, like we discussed with the word sh uh, peace or shalom, mm. is bigger than mere absence of turmoil. Mm. So faith is more than, it is belief, but it's way more than belief. It's more than just absence of doubt. It's more than absence of doubt. It's putting trust in something, mm. putting your whole trust mm. yeah. That's in something. Yeah, salvation, mm. yeah. All right, so if you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from, moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand exactly, it's, it's, it's exactly what you're saying, but I, I look at it, I would explain it in a different way, in that re the context of what's being discussed here is reconciliation. Mm. Now, reconciliation is not something one-off. If you're going to live in relationship with someone, it's not a one-off. And as you, as you so rightly said, it, 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 uh, reconciliation is expressed through the practice of faith. Yeah. Yeah. And, and reconciliation requires constant work. That's right. And reconciliation with God is about the maintenance of a relationship. And that relationship just doesn't stay there. You know, it's not yeah. something static. Yeah. It's something dynamic, which yeah. has to be worked at. Uh, and, and See, I, I always say there's not an either or on this. So there no. is, there is, we are reconciled. It says Romans 5 again, having been reconciled, how much more shall we be saved? You know, there, there is a, there's a past in the sense of what the Lord achieved on the cross. There's a presence in us, you know, through this process of, of forgiveness and repentance, of being reconciled, and there's a future. You know, and th this continuing um, in faith is part of fulfilling mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the future. The, the real question, and maybe I, I, I'm, you know, stirring where I, where I don't need to stir, but the, the um, is you know, is it contingent, this if, 
is is that um, salvation or, or is it us losing that um, you know through um, not exercising faith that holy living that we're called to having been reconciled or is there an element of our salvation itself being contingent on us now in your scripture that you read from Galatians by the way mm. the final verse um, actu actually sums it up saying uh, about how, how we live it said um, I do not set aside the grace of God mm. Uh, uh, for if righteousness could be gained through law, Christ died for nothing. Yeah. So it's, this is not a legal <coughs> thing that we must do this, we must obey the law so that we can uh, be holy and, and blameless. It is a, a practical thing. It's a difference between what we call transactional theology and relational theology. Mm -hmm. Now what I mean by that is that a transaction is I do this God responds this way, the deal's made. And it doesn't have to be a relationship. Yeah. But relationship theology yeah. is about the maintenance of that yeah. relationship, the maintenance of being reconciled to God. Yeah. I mean, John chapter, uh, John 3.16 is, For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him uh, shall have eternal life. And the actual tense is, whoever believes and continues to believe. Yes. And the sense is that you don't lose your salvation, it's you lose your relationship. Yes. It's the same in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our sins mm. as we forgive the sins of others. It doesn't mean that God doesn't forgive you, it's that the relationship is broken if you don't forgive others. Your relationship with God that's is fine. broken. It's not that you lose your salvation. And that's why we're so fixated on this transactional theology, mm. that it, it's like the deal's made. That's it's right. not about the deal, it's about the relationship with yeah. God. That's you a know. good point. Yeah. Very good point. And uh, again, you know, there's so many different church traditions on, on what happens to those who don't yeah. continue, who don't forgive. You know, who do yeah. continue in sin, you know, Romans 6, mm. um, uh, and, you know, just use grace as a license, you know, for us to just do, do what we want. And, you know, I can think of at least five, you know, different church traditions. The Catholics mop it up in purgatory, mm. you know, and, and all that goes along with that. So the Salvationist, it very much that you mm. have to be in a state of faith when you die, because you have to continue mm. in a state of faith. Um, and, um, you know, Watchman Nee, you know, draws this distinction between those who are overcomers and those who are not. You know, that, that, you know, even within the kingdom, there are those who actually don't, don't fulfill this if. Yeah. And, um, and of course, the, the sort of Martin Lloyd-Jones approach is, well, they weren't Christians in the first place. Um, and so there, there are, because we're grappling with, you yeah. know, what does it mean when someone actually doesn't live a holy life? Yeah. When they've be, apparently been reconciled. We're in the last few, um, you know, two minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I won't... <laughs> we won't open a massive <laughs> Well, we won't, discussion. we won't. But yeah. the, the Bible talks about <clears throat> our adoption. I mean, Romans 8, all, <clears throat> all of creation is groaning, waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. <clears throat> but the adoption... Okay, so Madonna is allowed to go to Malawi and adopt a, bo uh, yeah. a, a child. Yeah. And go. This may get too, too stretched, but it's a bit, we're in the last few moments now. But the action of adoption is like salvation. Mm. Mm. But if that child later in life, at the age of 18, decides to go back to Malawi and have nothing more to do with Madonna, it's a relationship thing. You need to maintain the relationship. Yes. The mother-daughter relationship yes. is an ongoing thing. Yeah. And it's saying, how do you maintain that ongoing relationship? You have to remain in faith. Yes. Uh, that's how I see it. Wonderful. OK. Mixing metaphors, run the race. Continue to run the race uh, and keep the faith. And we'll see you next week.